this short video we'll be looking at the mysterious life of owls, what they eat and where they live. We'll also take a look at some of their adaptations which make them top predators. I know what you're thinking, why do we have an owl in our Meet the Mammals module? Well that'll all become clear soon enough. Let's get started. There are about 250 species of owls in the world. They live on every continent except icy Antarctica, but in Scotland there's only five different species. Let's take a look at the different species and the habitats which they live in. There's a bit of a debate about the eagle owl and the snowy owl on whether they actually breed here and whether they should be included, but today we're just going to look at a resident species. The tawny owl is the most common species found in Scotland. A tawny can weigh about 500 grams and its wingspan can reach up to a metre in length. You'll find them in woodlands, town parks and even gardens. Most woodland owls are nocturnal, meaning they're active at night, or crepuscular, which means they're active at dawn and dusk. They spend most of their daytime in a roost hidden away. Most of us are familiar with the white undersides of a barn owl and the pale heart-shaped face. They're commonly found hunting over farmland and grassland. The little owl is the smallest of our owls. It was actually introduced during the late 1800s. And you can look for them sitting on fence posts. It lives mostly in tree-rich farmland or pasture areas or even rural villages. The short-eared owl gets its name from its just noticeable short ear tufts. It also has distinctive yellow eyes. This is an indication that it actually hunts during the day. You can find this owl in Moorland. The long-eared owl is so named because of its large ear tufts. These are not actually its ears, but instead a clever mechanism the bird uses to break up its outline against the background and it's perfect to keep up on prey when they're hunting. It's associated mostly with conifers. They're also more common in the north. Nest sites vary and can be holes in trees, old crow nests, barns, nest boxes and even on the ground. The female does most of the incubation of the two to five eggs and it takes about a month for them to hatch out. Then fuzzy little owlets emerge looking rather cute. The adults will look after their chicks for about four to five months teaching them to fly and to hunt. Owls have evolved as specialised hunters that have many special features to help them locate and catch their prey. They're perfectly designed to hunt at night time with deadly precision. First up, vision. The first adaptation is the most striking, the eyes. All owls have large forward facing eyes it's funny to think if we had eyes same size owls, they'd be the same size as tennis balls. The size allows them to make the most of what little light there is at night. Owls with black eyes tend to hunt at night. Although owls have binocular vision, their forward facing eyes cannot move in their sockets, so they must turn their heads instead. It won't go all the way around, but it can turn up to 270 degrees. Strangely, however, studies show that their eyes aren't actually much better than ours so they'll need other adaptations to help them hunt. The colouring of owls help camouflage them to help them hunt effectively. They're often perched out of sight to strike their unsuspecting prey. They also have soft feathers with a comb-like fringe on the feathers. This gives them such silent flight. The face shape is our next adaptation. It's a round facial disc with special feathers that catch sounds and direct them into the ear openings underneath the feathers. The ears themselves are hidden beneath the feathers, but what's strange is that they're asymmetrical or unevenly placed. This lets the ears work independently and helps owls detect distance of prey. The ears have different sized openings that can hear at different frequencies too. It's all very clever indeed. The last adaptation I'd like to look at is a deadly weapon that the owl carries. They're equipped with long, very sharp talons. The outer toe is reversible, which gives the owl a better grip on its prey. 
they'll often carry prey back to their nest using their talons. Like hawks and eagles, owls are called raptors, or birds of prey, which means they use sharp talons and curved bills to hunt, kill and eat other animals. Owls will often use perches to hunt from, especially in cold weather, as this reduces heat loss and saves energy which would otherwise be used in flight. They will sit and wait and ambush their prey. Owls feed mainly on small furry animals or mammals such as mice, foals, shrews, rats and even bats. But owls can also eat insects and worms and spiders and frogs, even small birds. Some individual owls will specialise in a particular prey. It's interesting to remember that owls are top predators. If they can survive in your local area, it means that lots of other wildlife is thriving too. Prey is often swallowed whole. If the owl finds it too large to swallow, it can be pulled apart with their strong beak. The food passes down to its gizzard, which is a thick-walled part of the bird's stomach for grinding food. And here, the solid remains that can't be digested, like the bones and fur, are squeezed and then coughed back up in a pellet. These coughed pellets are coughed up several hours after their meal usually returning to favourite perches to do so. There can be about two or three pellets produced in a day. Here I have some pellets that I've found underneath a large old tree that I suspect is a favourite perch for a barn owl. It's not poo, so it doesn't smell, but we can take a closer look inside it to discover just what this owl has had for lunch. I have had this pellet frozen for a few days to kill off the insects, if we break apart a pellet, we can see the fur fibres. We can start to make out some bones. Gently tease the bones out. You can use tweezers to help. You may need to steep your pellets first to soften it. It's best to lay these bones on a napkin or piece of coloured paper so that you can see them better. Try and identify your bones using an ID chart. You can see I've found the jawbone of a vole here. And look, here's a pelvis. And there's even an entire skull from a vole. Look at these teeth. I think it's safe to say our owl has had mammal for lunch. This fascinating activity provides valuable information on the diets of our different owl species. It helps us collect records of rare species and is a valuable means of monitoring changes in numbers of small mammals. It can be so exciting breaking open one of these little parcels to find out what the owl has had for dinner. Owl pellets can be really hard to find, but if you're lucky enough to find a perch or roosting site, perhaps beneath an old tree or in an old barn, then have a go yourself at dissecting an owl pellet. The Scottish Wildlife Trust has a video to help you on our online learning zone. Spotting an owl in flight or hearing the distinctive calls can be such an incredible wildlife encounter. When you're out on a walk, especially near wooded areas or farm edges, why not look for some telltale signs that owls are around? Look for poo. This can look like white paint splatter and can be found beneath old trees or outbuildings. You may be lucky enough to spot some dropped feathers. And of course, look for those owl pellets. Owls are often heard and seldom seen, so it might be best listening instead. Autumn evenings are best to listen for owls, but they can be heard all year. They call to proclaim territories and to attract mates. Many owls vocalise at distinctively low frequency, which allows their song to travel long distances without being absorbed by the trees around them. The tawny owl is probably the easiest recognised owl call. It does a kiwi and the male does a woohoo. Other likely owls that you might hear is the barn owl. It 
has more of a shrill screech, earning them the nickname the Screech Owl, or Ghost Owl. Owls face a lot of threats, including road fatalities, wildlife crime, poisons and the loss of nesting spots, such as traditional barns and old trees. Even farming improvements have an effect, as they cut down rodents to protect our crops, but at the same time only reduce the amount of food for our owls. Thankfully, owls under threat, like the barn owls, are included in Schedule 1 of the Wildlife and Countryside Act which affords them protection against disturbance whilst nesting. Charities such as the Scottish Wildlife Trust are working closely with farmers, landowners and developers to promote wildlife friendly practices. They put up owl boxes too and manage meadows and woodlands with owls in mind. You too can get involved. You could create a habitat for voles and other small mammals by keeping long patches of grass in your garden you could consider putting up owl boxes. It's important to link up all our green spaces and provide hunting corridors so that owls and other animals can pass between farmland, woodland, gardens and urban environments. You can also report any suspected illegal killings of birds to the police. And remember to report any pellet analysis so that we can keep an eye on the population of our beloved owls in Scotland. Thank you.